Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with the demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. Morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, and when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For what is for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues yeah. and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. something together. So all saints things for me is very, very touching, very special. But today we're going to talk about how we could restore our people to holiness, to be whole. Because being broken is not only when we fail on earth, we're able to work anything, but it's more also. Is more deeply when we grow, grow our heart, our 
our soul. Many occasions we talk about having a service of healing, and most people come and they have something broken, but they forget about the healing of the soul. The healing that comes and gives us power to continue walking in this world. And today, travel and lessons continue to fill some of those details of the meaning of the epiphany season. The season in which Jesus came and predicted who he was. If and in the period that the church or the lectionary of the church has came you to let us know, to manifest Jesus to us, manifest himself to the world, and present his purpose and to bring the messianic message of God, the good news, the good news of salvation. The good news that we're going to show us the path to live a better life. Or some would call it, as every church has, no? This mission statement. But also to let us know that he was the one whom the prophet had spoken about. Promise Messiah of God. <clears throat> Verse 3 to the Epiphany, we have seen an emphasis on many calls. And we know our life how also calls. People have been called to work here, to have music, to be doctors. To work here, to do there. Everybody has a call. But we see it from the Old and New Testament, including Jesus' call to ministry as the Son of God. And also we see how Jesus went out and called his disciples to the point that we hear somebody say, one of them say, what good to come from Nazareth? And we had that at that time. Oh, he's from such a place. What could good come from that place? Last week we were talking about the president of El Salvador who came from a small village. He came from a small village. And today he brought in again to our second term where the constitution of the day they said no. And he asked for special permission and they gave it. They granted the permission and he did it because he knew that somebody before had done it. But he came from a small village. From what we call from nowhere. But we also read a different calling. The first way we read is that calling of Jesus. That when he was baptized and came out, he heard that voice. That voice that told him, Look, you are my son. How surprised was Jesus when he heard that? I am your son. And he, maybe he said, Wait, wait, wait. No, you are my son. You are the one that I call. You are the one that's going to go outside there. Even John was, yes, you are the one. And then that's we we hear that someone, you know, that go called several times. And he was confused. And he went to the other side. And not no, 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 no. Samuel, it's you. It's God calling you. And 
Simon was called to be that great prophet of Israel. In Jesus' call, we have a continuation. Because Jesus call would be stay there, that call would end to start his holy ministry. And he started calling his disciples because he understood that he by himself could not accomplish the entire endeavor. That he needed orders to come and that when he lived, somebody would continue the ministry, the venture. But last week, it was different. Last week, we saw the ministry of Jesus in another level. We saw it in a preaching with authority, a preaching and healing in the synagogue, a preaching that was he was able to tell no one in the synagogue, no, get out. People was amazed because he had power and authority. I was preaching in a church last Sunday in Spanish, and I tried to distinguish between preaching with authority because in the Spanish community, authority is having a big voice. Yes. Yes, it's like, like when you, you go to your mom and she was shaking. Mama, why do I need to do that? Because I said so. And that was the end. My mother prays nine without authority. And when she spoke, everybody listened. I think I was the only one that made jokes with her. Everybody thought that I was the treasure one, no, I was the treasure one. But in this Sunday reading, we see Jesus move his manifestation to another level. He moved into another step. This manifestation of Jesus don't stay in one space. Moving from the synagogue into the life of the community. He fully moved from a form of comfort to a sound of challenge. He moved into the life of those broken with the intention of making them whole. Probably those that was not there, Jesus had to go outside to heal them. Probably there was not able to get to the church or to the synagogue. And what Jesus did? He moved his preaching and convert those preaching into action action in the community to those that probably were not able or cannot go to the synagogue because they were sick. The gospel reading is about moving the healing prayer in a building into the healing prayer of action. Jesus compassion to those. Jesus compassion to that woman that he came. Echoes his work of restoration to people to become whole. Holiness in life. 
being bad, but no complete. In the age manifestation, we see people getting really from bondage. And we, we are called not to escape from those responsibilities. But rather, we need to take our duties for the kingdom as people sustained by God's power. We was empowered to go out. And even today in church, we repeat it. At the end of the church, of the service, what we say? Go. Love and serve the Lord. And what we say? Amen. Amen means yes, I am. Yes, I'm going. Ah, but what happened is the day. So we need to remember that in our baptism covenant, we was asked. You proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ. Oh, yes, oh, God felt it was the one to answer. I will with God help. But remember that you also was confirmed. And you learned that in your confirmation. Maybe we forgot we need to withdraw. Our service of worship are very elaborate. And if you didn't know that, let me say something. You see, when we do the service of wedding in the movie, you know from where it comes? From the angry. The baptism that you hear is from us, the angry. Also the funeral, so let's not take that out. Yes, we have a very nice and wonderful service. Our Eucharist is precious. But in many cases, fragile and weak. I say this because in many cases we read, recite the word, but they get loose in the air. But churches every Sunday and in other occasions pray for the prisoner, the homeless, the hungry, the needy, for the sick, and others. So those prayers stay in the churches. They don't go anywhere. They don't have no action. Today, that's for reading Jesus' purpose to another dimension. He called it to action. He gave his reason another meaning, another sense. I don't think that we need to frame any particular church in particular. And when we are preaching, that's the last thing that we should do. But in general, I would ask this question to many churches. How many churches have a group to visit the prison? Visit the sick, to take care of the homeless, to take care of the hungry. And let's take the sick. We're going to take one. Most of the people that really pray as the sick 
a people known from us. People that sit in the pew with us, people that probably have communion with us and drink from the same cup. People that we know by name. And the question that we need to ask, when was the last time that we visited? When was the last time that we shared prayer with them? When was the last time that we brought communion to them? And the reason I move is because it's not the deacon that how so each one of us was baptized and become a deacon. Because each one of us was made for service. I was in Washington once with a lady that was a deacon from here, from New York. And she had been a deacon for four years. And she should have been a transition and deacon. And I asked her, what happened? Do you have a problem with the bishop? She said, no, the bishop has a problem with me. I said, how so? She said, he wanted me to be a priest and I love the work of the deacon. They said when she became a deacon, the accident was so powerful in her life that she didn't want to go to the priest work. I think that five years after she became a deacon, she decided then to be a priest. Brothers and sisters, Martin Luther, the German priest, the Lord, and him right one says that as our Heavenly Father a freely helped us in Christ, so ought we freely to help our neighbor by our body and work. And it should become to the other the soul of Jesus Christ. So that we may be mutually Christ. And that the same Christ may be in all of us. That is the way of the true Christian. Brothers and sisters, we may not be able to bring an entire physical healing to everyone, but we could bring peace, love, and holiness to each one. I remember that in 1985 or 1986, around there, Drug addiction become a pronounced illness in Washington High community. <laughs> the community leaders create a task force to help educate parents in that community about the issue. And I was included in that task force. We invite the president of the Olympic Committee in the Dominican Republic to give some conference here in the United States, especially in Boston, New York, and Rhode Island. The conference in New York was scheduled for 4 o'clock Saturday. <coughs> on Friday afternoon, around 1 o'clock, I get a call. <coughs> And the call was that the change is scheduled. And New York was going to be 10 o'clock Saturday morning. We already had registered around 80 to 100 persons to come to 
You went to each school, high school and middle school, to register the parents to come. And we had a very good amount of people. <clears throat> then we need them to change. So we started calling people to tell them to be changed from 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning. So the 100 become 12 people. After the conference, we sit down with the president of the committee and we say, Doctor, sorry, you have too many people to show. <coughs> and he has something to say that up to date is taking with me in my heart. He said to us, if we were able to help a family or change one person's life, we had a something. We did something. I believe it. And I asked her to take that thing. If we as a church could change one part of one person's life and make them whole, we did something. Today we are challenged by Jesus making the good news and taking it to people's life. Presence, of course, in people may change a lot of people. The presence in people's life will help us to continue on that commandment that Jesus gave us love one another. And we ask God that this become part of our daily life. Word, his word to the community. Jesus gave us this message not for us to keep it, but to share it, to bring it to others. And in all of our teaching, we was commissioned to continue Jesus' ministry. And we answer. To that commission, yes, with God's help. I ask you, please, let us our cross. Let us follow Jesus' example and bring holiness 